hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hi, my name's Alyssa and I primarily make paranormal and supernatural content, whether that be talking about mythology, urban legends, um, I also like diving into ghost stories sometimes, as well as Reddit stories, um, whether that be creepypastas, no sleep, that type of stuff. And if you are not new, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, I have not posted in two, three months? I don't know, maybe longer. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm back now, uh, and if you are new, I just want to let you know I don't have a, um, there's a fly in front of me. Um, I don't really have a specific, um, uploading schedule. I kind of just upload every couple of months, so, um, yeah, it really depends on the year, and 2023 has not been great, so I'm sure you guys can understand, um, but anyways, I hope you liked today's video, and if you want to check out more content, you can go ahead and check out my channel, I have a bunch of other stuff similar to this, um, I have some older videos talking about, uh, again, like I mentioned, mythology and stuff like that, um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Much as I wanted to do something different for my next video, like I always say, um, I'm gonna be reading another No Sleep Reddit story, um, so I hope you guys like this one because it, it sounds creepy, so hopefully we're all creeped out together. <laughs> okay, so the title is, I work as a night guard for a rundown hospital. I think the staff is doing something to the patients. I've been working as a night guard at my local hospital for nearly a year now, and let me tell you, the darkness that settles over this place isn't just from the absence of sunlight. The job fell into my lap unexpectedly, a desperate attempt to escape unemployment after losing my previous job due to a company-wide downsizing. Supposedly, the old CEO had, ca had been caught embezzling funds, and the new one decided half of the departments needed to be axed to cut our losses. Whatever the hell that meant. When I first applied, the HR manager didn't seem too concerned about my lack of experience in security. They just wanted someone reliable to keep an eye on things while the regular staff took their much needed rest. The place was pretty much pretty fucking creepy, sure, but I didn't have many other options at the time. It was either use what I had already learned from a small security job I did for a month as a favor to a friend of mine at the time, or flip burgers. Everyone that paid well had their own private security company, and they certainly weren't going to hire some loser who barely had more than a month's experience under his belt. The first time I set foot inside my local hospital for my initial walkthrough with the head doctor, Dr. Roberts, a shiver ran down my spine. The fluorescent lights flickered intermediately. I'm gonna try that word one more time. Intermittently casting unsettling shadows in the dimly lit hallways. Dr. Robert seemed unbothered by the atmosphere as he led me through each section of the hospital, explaining what each room was and its function, even stopping into a few long-term patients' rooms and introducing me to a few. Most of them were older people, but there was one kid who had broken his leg in a ski accident and had to stay in the hospital for a while to heal. His name was Alex, and he liked to stay up late. As we continued our tour, I couldn't help but notice the outdated equipment and faded decor. Roberts assured me that despite the hospital's appearance, they were committed to providing the best care to their patients, but his words seemed hollow against the backdrop of peeling paint and worn out furnishings from the 90s. I scratched my head and asked him pretty bluntly if the camera system was going to be using, I was going to be using was old or recently made this century. He just smiled and kept leading me onto the hospital elevator and into the highest floor of the building before showing me a blue door. This is a security office, Mr. Matthew. I trust everything is to your liking. The room was rather nice, actually. There was a small mini fridge in the corner of the room near the computers, plugged into a wall socket. It was stacked with energy drinks on the house from what Robert had said but he mentioned I would need to buy them myself once I ran out of them. But there was a vending machine in the lobby, so I wouldn't need to go too far to stock up again. Here's the weird part. While the building seemed ancient and looked ready to collapse at any given moment, the camera system was all new and shiny. It had completely HD quality during the daytime, and at night it had night vision mode, 
that could allow me to see 20 feet down the hall and up to the door. Roberts showed me the system in more detail like he purchased the thing specifically for me to use. The weird thing was I remember using this type of system at my friend's job. Anyway, a few details stuck out about the thing. Dr. Roberts explained that the cameras automatically recorded footage of every floor, every five minutes, and the data was backed up regularly. He mentioned that the setup was designed to keep the hospital secure and monitor any potential issues from patients or uninvited guests, as he put it. I remember thinking it was a bit excessive. It's not like this place would even be worth robbing, but who was I to question the guy's methods? He was nearly a foot taller than me and looked like he could fold me with how hard he gripped my hand for a handshake earlier in the morning. I didn't exactly want to get on his bad side already, just because of a weird hunch I had at the time. One detail that caught my attention was the need for constant da data management. With all the recording, the system's storage could fill up quickly. To prevent this, the footage had to be deleted daily to avoid the drive reaching capacity within five days. He made extra sure that I deleted the data and showed me three times how to delete it. Now, here's where things took a weird turn, and probably an indicator I should have gotten the hell out of this place in the first place. Dr. Roberts showed me a map of the hospital on a separate monitor, indicating where each camera was placed and in what rooms on what floors. Strangely, he specifically pointed out that my assigned floor, the highest one in the building, didn't have any cameras installed. When I questioned this, he brushed it off with a calm smile, explaining that there were no patients on that floor, so it wasn't a priority. But something about that explanation didn't sit right with me. Why would they leave an entire floor without any surveillance? Especially when I would be spending most of my time there. It's not like they evidently couldn't afford it already, with that room probably being the most expensive thing in the hospital. As our tour concluded, we stepped out and he thanked me profusely for taking the position again. Dr. Roberts assured me that the hospital was a place of healing and caring, despite its outward appearance. He emphasized the importance of my role as a night guard, ensuring the safety and security of both the staff and patients during the night hours. I looked over at a rotting piece of drywall and shook his hand, staring off to the side as he said, healing. This place looked anything but healthy to stay. The first few day, the first few nights weren't bad. Mostly, I spent it talking to the cute nurses by the nursing station. This one red-haired girl, oh my god, named Cassandra often liked to joke that they were the ones protecting me instead of the other way around, which I had to nervously laugh off a few times. What struck me as odd was how the nurses stared at me, not just in passing, but with an intensity that was hard to ignore. Those charming smiles would falter as soon as I looked away for a moment, and their eyes would lock onto mine, unblinking. The interactions were odd, to say the least, but I chalked it up to their quirky personalities or perhaps their way of alleviating the tension of the night. My brother used to stare at me a lot when he was younger, if he didn't know how to end a conversation, so I figured it might have been something like that. And then there were the nights I spent monitoring the camera feeds. The nurse's strange behavior continued even in the surveillance footage. I noticed them lingering around the cameras pointed at the nurse's station, exchanging glances towards my camera multiple times, always with that same smile. After three weeks of uneventful working there, though, something happened. It was a Tuesday in September. I think I had gotten used to how creepy the staff was at that point, and they seemed to mind less that I was there at night. Mostly, they just looked bored dealing with the elderly patients. I would too if my entire night consisted of being on the, my phone, twiddling my thumbs, waiting for something to happen. I even got bored because that's what I did for several nights in a row. There's only so much you can discuss with a 25-year-old nurse who's way out of your league and thinks you're cute before the conversations turn stale. I was scrolling through my phone until I happened to switch to the main entrance camera. I hadn't checked it much that night because it usually gives me a motion alert if the camera detected movement at all. Mostly I just have to be dealing with the neighborhood drunks at that point by either telling them to go away or calling the cops to get them from shuffling around the hospital. This time, this guy was certainly not drunk. There was a person laying on the floor of the hospital lobby who I hadn't seen at that point. He looked like he was covered in something. I assume now it was blood. 
At first I couldn't tell what I was looking at until he started to occasionally twitch around. I jumped up and raced down the elevator to the nurse's station, asking one of them to come with me because there was someone injured on the first floor. I think they thought I was joking at first with how they just stared at me, but eventually one of them came and absentmindedly looked over at the guy. He looked like he was stabbed about 20 times and somehow wandered into the building before collapsing. The nurse at the front desk was on her break, so I guess she never saw him just laying there. Something to point out is that this area doesn't get many visits aside from people like Alex, who injured themselves too badly to stay at home, or the elderly who can't take care of themselves. We lived in a small rural area, so not much was going on at any given point besides some idiot burning himself alive while playing with gasoline. Back to the guy. He wasn't responding to the nurse, lightly shaking him or talking to him in a monotonous voice. Wait. <laughs> we got another nurse over and it was a big deal. They carried him off while I sort of just sat there and watched them do it, then went to head back to my security room a few minutes later after explaining what had happened to a nurse I liked. Her name's Cassandra. As I was heading back from the lobby, my mind wandered wandering to possibly ask one of the nurses I've been talking to out. I heard a voice coming from one of the rooms. Hey Matthew, how's your night going? What's it like being a security guard in a place like this? Alex's voice carried a tone of genuine curiosity, a small grin forming as he spoke. I sighed inwardly, slightly amused by his ability to strike a conversation in even the most dead of hours. Oh, you know, just another night of keeping an eye on things. Nothing too exciting, I replied, my steps slow, slowing as I stood by his doorway. I didn't really feel like telling the poor kid that I probably just watched a dead man get put into a room and probably ruin his night. Alex leaned back against his soft pillows, his grin not wavering. Well, at least you've got some company, right? Yeah, I suppose so, I replied with a chuckle. But hey, how are you holding up, Alex? You seem to be up quite often. His grin faded slightly, replaced by a more contemplative expression. Yeah, well, skiing accidents aren't fun and they're a bit painful having your legs broken in about everywhere. But you know, the nurses here are pretty cute. Makes the visits a little less painful. He winked back at me. I laughed, shaking my head at his typical teenage boy humor. You're not wrong there, they are pretty nice. Alex's expression turned more serious and his gaze seemed to drift off for a moment. You know though, sometimes I wish they'd stop giving me the forgetting drugs. His words caught me off guard and I raised an eyebrow. Forgetting drugs? What do you mean? Alex's eyes refocused on me, his tone oddly earnest. Yeah, you know, the stuff they give me to forget the pain. It's like every time I'm awake at night, they just pump me full of meds and I wake up later with no memory of what happened. Now that I thought about it, it was sort of weird how Alex's door didn't have any cameras facing it or the hall his room is at. But I'm sure it's nothing. They're probably just a side effect of the medicine, Alex said while staring out his window. I scratched my head, my unease growing as I struggled to come up with a response. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Medicine can have all sorts of effects, strange effects. <laughs> Alex nodded, his gaze once again distant. Yeah, anyway, I'm probably gonna try to get some rest now. It's been a long day. I nodded in return, not sure what else to say. All right, Alex, take care and get some rest. Thanks, Matthew. Good night, he replied. His voice a mixture of exhaustion and resignation as I turned the light off in his room. Good night, kiddo. I said, watching him for a moment before turning and making my way back down the hallway towards the elevator. As I walked, I couldn't help but shake my head in disbelief. Fucking forgetting drugs? What kind of hospital was this? I slumped into my comfortable chair and sighed. This was going to be one painful job, wasn't it? A few months later, a few days ago, in fact, I had nearly forgotten about the whole thing until I was back at the hospital for another shift. Everything had been relatively uneventful and I was getting paid extremely well for my work, so I kept showing up. After hours, I even asked Cassandra on a date and she actually said yes. 
We've been seeing each other for a few days on and off mostly, and her house is gorgeous. But that night I noticed that Alex's room had been unusually quiet. Usually he was the one to strike up conversations or make lighthearted jokes as I was walking past his room with my flashlight. But tonight there was an eerie silence. Curiosity getting the better of me, I decided to check in on him. Making my way down the hallway, I approached his room and knocked gently on the door. There was no response, just a heavy stillness that hung in the air. My hand hesitated on the doorknob, and a knot formed in my stomach. Maybe he was sleeping? Alex? I called out softly. I didn't narrate that very well. A few months later, a few days ago in fact, I had nearly forgotten about the whole thing until I was back at the hospital for another shift. Everything had been relatively uneventful and I was getting paid extremely well for my work, so I kept showing up. After hours, I even asked Cassandra on a date and she actually said yes. We've been seeing each other for a few days on and off mostly, and her house is gorgeous. But that night I noticed that Alex's room had been unusually quiet. Usually he was the one to strike up conversations or make lighthearted jokes as I was walking past his room with my flashlight. But tonight there was an eerie silence. Curiosity getting the better of me, I decided to check in on him. Making my way down the hallway, I approached his room and knocked gently on the door. There was no response, just a heavy stillness that hung in the air. My hand hesitated on the doorknob, and a knot formed in my stomach. Maybe he was sleeping? Alex? I called out softly. I didn't narrate that very well. Alex? I called out softly, my voice carrying a hint of worry. Still, there was no answer. With a sense of unease, I slowly pushed the door open, my heart pounding in my chest. What I saw on the other side was a sight that made my blood run cold. The room was in disarray, the bed sheets tossed aside, and the window curtains swaying slightly as if disturbed by a breeze. But the most unsettling part was the empty hospital bed, the sheets drenched in a dark crimson stain. I raced up back into my office and immediately checked the elevator camera. Wondering if someone had broken in and attacked Alex. There had been footage of someone walking in the elevator and heading to his floor, but there wasn't. For the past few hours, there wasn't any sort of weird activity or anything like that. Just silence. Desperate for answers, I rushed to the nurse's station. Cassandra was there, her expression a mix of surprise and concern as I approached her. Cassandra, I need to call the police. Alex is missing. She glanced at me. Her eyes widening for a moment before she held up a hand to stop me. Matthew, wait. There is no need to call the police. Alex got transferred to another room in the middle of the night. My confusion deepened. Transferred? Why? What happened? Cassandra sighed softly, her gaze unsympathetic as she filed her nails. Something happened with his legs, I think. It was a medical decision. The doctors felt it was best to move him to another hospital for specialized care. I couldn't shake the unease that was gnawing at me. But why was there blood in the room? And why didn't anyone tell me? Cassandra's gaze turned icy, and she stared at me for a long moment, as if thinking long and hard about something. Finally, she leaned in closer over the table towards me, her voice dropping to a low, almost chilling tone. Matthew, sweetie, I'm going to be nice to you here. The only thing in your resume was to watch the cameras and report anything suspicious, right? I nodded, feeling a sense of trepidation as her demeanor shifted. Good. So you shouldn't need to concern your pretty little head with anything that happens medically, okay? Now, if you want to keep your job and stay out of trouble, I suggest you focus on your duties and leave the rest to us, she said voice dripping with a hint of condescension as she turned away from me. Now, good night, Matthew. Go back to your cameras. I stood there for a moment, watching as Cassandra returned to her paperwork, her demeanor shifting back to normal as if our conversation had never happened. With a reluctant nod, I muttered a quiet, good night, before turning away and walking back to my security office. That was three nights ago. It's been my day off for the weekend, and Cassandra hasn't told me anything about Alex. It's not like it's her job to, I guess. We've mostly been on a few dates and they've gone well. I've tried to push my thoughts on that hospital to the back of my mind, 
focusing on getting to know Cassandra better and trying to enjoy my some semblance of a normal life outside this place. If anyone out there is reading this, I'd appreciate your thoughts or feedback. Am I overthinking things? Am I going crazy thinking something is messed up with this place? I'll be checking back here for any responses, so feel free to share your thoughts. And that looks like that is the end of the first part of that series. So if you guys like this series, um, I'll probably make another video when the uh, creator updates it, but it doesn't look like there's anything else. There is definitely something weird about that though, so I don't know. If you guys liked it, make sure to leave a thumbs up, and if you like my content, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!